how do you depict true fear in a static medium? In films and television, it's the usage of sound, musical score, selectively chosen camera work, believable acting, Raise your voice at me. I am your mother. and of course, the pressuring execution of suspense or jump scares. For comics, some of these practical attributes are non-existent. Therefore, comic writers and artists are reliant upon the effectiveness of creating unease and dread through imagery alone. Resolving in imitating camera work by illustrating a wide-angle shot or close-up, using panels as clean cuts, or page turns for spine-chilling revelations. With that all said, how do you actually scare a reader? To falsify security is the weighted purpose of horror, whether slasher, cosmic, apocalyptic, psychological, monster, or others within the horror subgenres, whatever antagonistic form, their manifestation is fabricated as a means to fracture the idealism of safety. And no one plays tricks more than the mind, and quite literally. The amygdala is responsible for inciting this response. Fear is a primal retaliation in promoting survival. It's what drives human evolution. Basic instinct is heightened when tested, and rationalism is seeked when the indescribable occurs. Because, as a whole, mankind fears the unknown. Something always has to be given meaning, to have logical reasoning, thus leading humanity on quests or research for understanding. This primitive way of living enables the genre of horror to dig into these blanks of insecure fears. Aliens, ghosts, demons, the deformed shadow in your room, or the unsearched depths of deep waters. Fear of the unknown is a powerful tool. It's dominant within the human's apprehensive capabilities. As artificial thoughts and fabricated imaginations drive suspense. They let an oppressive mood linger, seeping you in the fear of something beyond human perception. And indie comic Something is Killing the Children plays upon these rhetorics and foundations in ways that makes a cruel story lure you into the depths of reprehensible suffering. As Something lurks within the shadows, teetering through the grasps of reality. Maybe they're real, maybe they're imaginative. The question isn't the why, where or when, but the who, and more specifically, the what. As writer James Tynan IV puts it so accurately, there is something more generally frightening about the kind of abstract horror and dread that you feel towards the world when there's a threat that you don't know how to solve. You just feel absolutely helpless in the face of it. Within quaint towns burrowed in a stillness of inactivity, playing upon the common trope of nothing ever happens here, is the perfect target for unforeseeable tragedies. As the kids in Archer's Peak are abruptly going missing by the day at a worrying pace, with no trace of rationale nor suspects. And as for the kids they do find, are sights only the strongest of stomachs could handle. Artist Werther de la Dera and colorist Mikel Muerto held back no punches in showing raw, haunted imagery that makes the palm sweat and heart rate increase. In particular, the brighter and more saturated redness of blood is a standout during the blue atmospheric night scenes, smears and splatters so visceral in their depiction. Something's signature tellings are influenced by the likes of Stephen King, eerie environments, never-ending nightmares, frustratedly worrying parents, and the unthinkable horror that is the death of children. To search for an answer or explanation is a lost cause in this story, for the horrors are left to the eyes of children alone, adults unknowingly removed from the terrors surrounding them. And Erica Slaughter, the protagonist of this story, is unenlightening in her methods. For all intents and purposes, she's a narrative bystander. She lays down information flat, stating the unexplainable and expecting those to either catch up or be left behind. It's a refreshing take on the usual hero coming to save the day archetype. She beckons the frustration of exclusion, like not being in on the joke, but the joke at hand is a concept so unimaginable and unbelievable it's to be laughed at if not nervously, and in an unbenevolent manner. 
because children's lives are at stake. Something is out there, preying and lurking. A stranger appears with a practiced natural order in dealing with the clear familiarity in mass child murders, and there's still no answer as to what on earth is happening. As the same question deserves repeating. Who is kidnapping and murdering these kids? But as the title suggests, it's not someone, but something. This goes beyond the ideals of a simple murder mystery, and instead deepens into our layered story invoking the horrors that your children have nightmares over. This comic series depicts horrors in ways fictional imaginations clash with reality. Reminiscent towards the atmospheres built within Stranger Things and the Promised Netherland, something delves into the monstrosities of terror depicted in the tragedies of adolescent killings. And yet, what divides something's story is absence. It's said that fear is trickery, the mind playing games as an ardent defence mechanism to protect oneself. But what if, by chance, the mind isn't lying? I have no means to spoil this series, especially the main enticing feature, as it's one most enjoyed without pre-knowledge, and deserving of more recommendations. It's the quintessence of horror, and a sure fan favourite in the making. With a live adaptation on the horizon, allocated to the creators of Dark, who are masterclass in visualising foreboding ambience and tension, I have no doubts towards the inevitable popularity this comic will accumulate. It's a story of mystery underlined by emotive linework and eerily applied colours. A story of many questions, leads that are uncertain and happenings unexplainable. Despite this, one fear remains undeniably true. Something is killing the children. Hey guys, thanks for watching to the end of the video. This was actually a surprise video. I didn't tell anyone about this video because I wanted to do a short but sweet video about a comic that I have loved since its very first issue, which is something is killing the children. And especially with the announcement of the live action adaptation coming along, it just pushed me to want to do this video even more. As usual, I want to thank my patrons for supporting me over on Patreon. If you do want to support the channel, I'm going to put the Patreon link down below in the description. And also a big thank you to you guys, the viewers, for continuing to support and watch all of my videos. I truly appreciate it. And the Land of Lustrous video hasn't gone anywhere. I'm still working on that video. I actually got most of this video done as I was doing my promo video, so I was only like a week's worth of editing away from finishing this video, so I thought I'd get it done whilst I'm still dabbling with the script of the Land of the Lustrous video. But as usual, thank you again, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.